not afraid Though the arrows fly by day I am yours, you know my name No fear ain't got a hold on me I am not afraid Got to buy a shield of faith I won't fall, cause you're my strength No fear ain't got a hold on me I'm not afraid I'm not afraid I'm not afraid No fear ain't got a hold on me Hello everyone, my name is Marie Miller and I am so excited and blessed and honored to be part of the Be Not Afraid conference and be able to share my heart with you uh, during these difficult and strange times, uh, but also uh, on the most holy week of weeks. Uh, it's such a beautiful uh, time and blessing and I am just so excited uh, to be with you today. I'm gonna start with a song called You're Not Alone. I think that it's very, very easy for us to feel extremely alone right now. And uh, I really miss my friends uh, and I really miss a community. Uh, I'm a full-time professional artist and so I am a large gathering. <laughs> that is my greatest joy, our large gatherings. That's how I work, that's how I uh, find joy. And so um, it can feel very lonely. Um, but this is a song that I wrote for a friend that was going through a very difficult time and he felt like he was alone and I wanted to let him know that he wasn't. This is called You're Not Alone, and I uh, hope you like it. You're not alone, you're not alone, you're not alone. You're not alone. 
that is a song called You're Not Alone, and I hope it fills your heart a little bit today, knowing that you are not alone and that we are together as a community in Christ. It's very beautiful as a church. We are celebrating Holy Week in a way that we have never celebrated Holy Week, but we are as united because we are united in Christ, and I know that nothing can separate us from the love of Jesus. And so it's great to be with you, and I hope that you do not uh, feel alone. Uh, when I was thinking of things to talk about uh, for this for this conference and what was on my heart, um, a pretty big thing uh, that has been really speaking to me is this idea of our Lord saying, give me a drink. And he does this in scripture uh, with the Samaritan woman. And he sees her um, and he tells her uh, as he's passing, he sees the woman from Samaria and he says, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the town to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how can you, a Jew, ask me, a Samaritan woman, for a drink? Jesus answered and said to her, if you knew the gift of God and who is saying to you, give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, sir, you do not even have a bucket <laughs> and it is too deep. Where then can you get this living water? And, um, I was thinking about this, and this is one of my favorite passages in scripture, and I love this so much um, because it's this conversation that the Lord is having, and uh, it's this idea of satiating thirst, uh, and he simply just says, give me a drink, and on the cross, um, which we are going to celebrate his passion, his death, um, one of the last things he said was, I thirst, so our Lord really was close to this idea of us satiating his thirst. Um, so he says, give me a drink. Um, and she's kind of like, what are you talking about? Sure, I mean, I guess I can. And I love also our Lord later on, he talks to her about how she has things um, that are before him. So he says, you know, call your husband. And the woman says, I don't have a husband. He says, you're right. Um, you have five husbands and the one that you're living with now is not even your husband. And this is always a spoken to me in a really special way. And I think this has a unique lesson for us uh, as a church right now, um, because our Lord is asking us to satiate his thirst um, when our wells seem really dry. We seem really empty. Um, we are struggling financially. Some of us are struggling um, health-wise. Um, if we are healthcare workers, we are exhausted. Um, there's a lot of worry and stress. And even if you're healthy um, and you're financially secure, you're at home quarantining and you're stressed out of your mind. Uh, and you're just like, oh my gosh, like what is going on? We're all going through our own burdens and we're all feeling exhausted and feeling like our wells are empty. And our Lord is saying in this time, give me a drink. I also think, side note, of this idea of us being at home, and maybe we have um, young children, um, maybe we have brothers and sisters that are asking us for the most annoying things, like they're just everywhere and they're always around you, and they're asking you uh, for stuff, like, hey, could you grab that for me? Could you do this for me? And it's a, kind of the same way our Lord asks me that, that simplest thing, is that when we answer that tiny little call of like, hey, give me a drink, can you grab me a beer? Can you, can you, get me, can you make me coffee? That's our Lord saying, give me a drink. So I just think that's a really like a beautiful moment too. But our Lord is calling us to satiate his thirst. What an honor that the God of the universe uh, believes that we are the ones um, that can satiate the thirst of him. So beautiful. Also, uh, it's not just him that's thirst is satiated. The only one that can satiate our thirst, our desire. I think all of us were born with this ache, with this hunger, with this thirst, and we don't know how to satiate it. And God is the only one who can satiate this thirst, this ache in our hearts for something greater than this life, for something greater than ourselves. And so when we've uh, having a lot of things taken away, uh, God is calling us right now um, to satiate his thirst, but also to have the openness to let him satiate our thirst for himself. Uh, I wrote a song that's on my new album, Little Dreams, and it's called Don't Look For God. And it's a song about how nothing else will fill us. It's a song about how nothing else will fill us but God. 
and um, I hope you like it. It's um, it's a it's a song about thirsting and about how God is the only one who can see she is thirst, and it's called Don't Look for God. I hope that you have the most blessed Easter of your life, that you are filled with joy. And I hope that in this season where so much has been taken away, um, that we realize that we truly cannot find God anywhere else, that he is the only one that can satiate our thirst and uh, that he has called us uh, to satiate his thirst, to give him a drink. And so in any way you can this week to give him that drink, um, to give him that gift of your love, of your sacrifice, um, of your hope, of your joy, um, and that you see everyone uh, this week, even if it's only the people in your immediate family, um, as Jesus asking you to give him a drink and to give it to him, uh, knowing that he will bless you with living water. All right, God bless you. Stay so strong and so faithful to our Lord and our Lady, and it's been a blessing for me to speak and sing for you.